First John 5, 7, often called the Johannine coma, is not the only Trinitarian corruption of scripture. I'm about to show you a, a little known corruption that also occurs in the first letter to the Corinthians. But here, as you can see, is the difference between the King James Version, which used only a few uh, copies of Greek manuscripts, compared to modern versions like the NIV. So this is well known. It's been known for maybe, according to Daniel Wallace, the textual critic, the last 500 years at least. But it's interesting to note that only until 1960, I believe, the Pope at that time said that there were some questions about it. They didn't even discount it outright. So let's look at this other corruption I found. So in the book by Collins here, first on 1 Corinthians, so there's 1 Corinthians 8, 6. That's 6 for the verse. So it reads, Yet for us there is one God the Father, from whom are all things, and for whom we exist, and there is one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom all things exist, and by whom we exist. So that's a normal reading. That's what you have in your Bibles. But then he notes, Collins, Gregory of Nyssa, or Nyssa, and a few relatively late Greek manuscripts, have appended a third stitch to Paul's two-part hymn, this speaks of the Spirit, quote, and one Holy Spirit in whom all things exist and in whom we exist. This is clearly an addition, a Trinitarian corrective to the earlier tradition. So you can see how early this corruption was. Gregory of Nyssa was one of the so-called Cappadocian fathers from the fourth century. So we know that the Johannine coma uh, was produced as a corruption in uh, probably medieval times, if not later, around the time of Erasmus. But uh, this one goes way back, so there were already uh, inklings, if you will, and scribes trying to introduce this three-in-one concept. Denoted Textual critic Bruce Metzger, in his textual commentary on the Greek New Testament, also noted this corruption. So he says, at the close of the verse, several witnesses expand Paul's reference to one God the Father and one Lord Jesus Christ by adding, and one Holy Spirit, in whom are all things, and we in him. Metzger calls this the Trinitarian form was current as early as the close of the 4th century for Gregory Naziensis, that's the same Gregory of Nyssa, or Nyssa, quotes it in his book, The Orations. Now, in the book by Grant here, Gods and the One God, he goes on to say, the passage in 1 Corinthians shows Paul trying to bring order, but out of chaos, in regard to the One God, the Father, and the One Lord Jesus but not the Holy Spirit. As late as 325, the Nicene Creed ended abruptly with the words, also the Holy Spirit. But by the end of the 4th century, the subjects of theological debate included the Spirit as well as the Son. And in 381, the Creed of Constantinople contained a fairly elaborate statement of belief on the subject. Quote, and in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the life giver proceeding from the Father, worshipped and glorified together with the Father and the Son, who spoke through the prophets. Shortly before that date, there were those who amended the text of 1 Corinthians in order to provide a more definite notice about the Spirit. Some manuscripts refer to the Father and the Son, and then add mention of one Holy Spirit, in whom are all things, and we in him. So as you can see, the Trinitarian corruption goes back even further than the Johannine coma, coma to the 4th century. And this is the time of the great Christological debates between Arians and Nicenes, which became the Orthodox Catholic Protestant 